from the station that's on your side. News 12, first at 5, continues. A car and an 18-wheeler both plunging into the Augusta Canal off the I-20 bridge in a matter of months. All this while crews work to widen those bridges. What the Department of Transportation has to say about these recent crashes. But first, Richmond County students have been back and forth from learning virtual to the classroom as the district navigates surging COVID cases and staff absences. And now they're taking a new step to manage cases. As Will Rhea reports, they're opening a free testing site at Windsor Spring Elementary. Richmond County is partnering with the Heritage Pharmacy Group to offer COVID-19 testing for the entire district. And we've seen many schools closed because of COVID-related issues. Now the goal of this entire operation is to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. This partnership is meant to offer quick, easy, and free access to COVID-19 testing for the public, but more importantly, students and their families, teachers, and staff members in the Richmond County school system. All you have to do is follow the cones, pull up to a staff member, and put your information in by scanning this QR code. That's how you'll get your test results. At this site, staff will do a rapid test, which gets results in 30 minutes. They'll also do a PCR test. Those results take 24 to 48 hours. With recent tests, Testing delays in our area, this site prioritizes the Richmond County school system. I think it's a sense of security. You know, we want to be able to know, you know, during this time and be assured of having a place that when you're feeling symptomatic or if you've been in contact with someone, to have some place where you can go. Coming up, the district explains how this testing partnership can help keep students, staff, teachers in those classrooms as well as keep these schools open on News 12 at 6 o'clock. Reporting in Augusta, Will Rio, on your side. Thank you, Will. The site at Windsor Spring Elementary School will be open from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, and Saturday from 8 to 1. South Carolina VHEC is giving out free at-home testing kits. They're distributing 140,000 total at county health agencies all across the state. These kids, kits each have uh, two tests inside. You can go to the Aiken County Health Department over on Beaufort Street from 8.30 until 4.30, Monday through Friday. Supplies are limited, though, so you can call the number on your screen right away to check for availability before heading over that way. Taking a look outside as well in just about 10 minutes. All right, thanks for that, Riley. The trial date is set for a former Augusta commissioner charged with lying to agents and destroying records during a federal investigation. Former District 4 Commissioner Sammy Sias was indicted on those charges back in July. Now, all of this stems from an investigation where a former employee accused Sias of sexual misconduct, pocketing SPLOS funds, and mistreating children at the Jamestown Community Center. Sias says he's innocent of all of those allegations, pleading not guilty to them back in August. His trial is set to start March 28th at 9 a.m. Today we're getting a look at that police report after a car plunged into the Augusta Canal off the I-20 bridge. This happened back on the 16th, and the report says the driver veered left, crashed through that railing, traveled between the eastbound and westbound lanes for about 200 feet before falling right here into the Augusta Canal. Two people inside. They both made it out safely. This, ac this accident, though, comes less than a month after an 18-wheeler drove over the same bridge. Claire Allen, live for us just off I-20 with what the Department of Transportation has to say about safety. Claire. When I spoke to the Georgia Department of Transportation, they say driving too fast and not paying attention are just some of the leading factors when it comes to crashes on the I-20 bridge by the Augusta Canal. Their message to you is to keep your eyes on the road, especially in a construction site. The reconstruction project is safety and operations based. The I-20 bridge has seen a string of misfortunes over the last few weeks. A tractor trailer took a dive into the canal, then a car did the same just last week. Obviously, we'd hate to, to see that any time, but that's part of the reason, too, why we're rebuilding that entire area. In last week's car crash, the police report says the car was heading away from Augusta when it went off the road, over the rail, and into the canal. Because of the crash history and incidents like this, this is why we're investing along South Carolina um, 80 some odd million to totally rebuild it to help prevent or eradicate this problem in the future. Obviously, crazy things can always happen no matter what kind of traffic device. DOT says infrastructure work is needed to get more space on the bridge and keep drivers and workers safe. 
Workers on safety is a huge issue, and these projects are upgrading these 1960 some odd, you know, built bridges going for two to three lanes, and we're going to have additional shoulder width. DOT adds their main goal during and after this project is safety. Everybody wants to, to get home that extra two or three minutes you may save from speeding, specifically in a work zone, is not worth um, potentially impacting your lives or hundreds of others that ripple down when a life is lost uh, in a crash. Now, right now, now, right now, construction is being done on the right westbound lane on the bridge, and that lane, that side is down to one lane. The construction project is expected to be done early 2023. So we need to use patience and slow down for quite some time. Thanks for that update, Claire. Flames shooting through the roof and an entire building engulfed. This was the scene in DeKalb County when a massive fire broke out at a partially abandoned condo building this morning. Firefighters contained it to one building, and thankfully, no one got hurt. The fire captain says there were renters in two of the eight units, and squatters were also there. He says there's so much damage, it's hard to determine the cause of the fire. DeKalb County has worked for years to demolish the blighted property. Calling all foodies. If you're hungry, it is the second annual Columbia County Restaurant Week. This year, 13 local restaurants offering different specials from BOGOs to discounts to specialized limited time menus. Places like Rooted Coffee House, Ironwood Tavern, Cork and Flame, the Crazy Empanada, they're all ready to serve you right now. We're looking forward to bringing a little bit of, you know, our different things that we can do at the Crazy Empanada. I wanted to bring Cuban, Puerto Rican, and a little of other stuff from, you know, around the Latin America in like a different twist. Okay, we're interested in all of that. A lot of the restaurants taking part have delivery and pickup, and this whole list is on our website and the app, WRDW.com. Sloan O'Connor is going to tell us more about this event coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock. And now I'm hungry. Thanks, Richard. Mm -hmm. In the past two weeks, Georgia has lost eight players to the transfer portal. You should start getting tax documents for 2021 in the mail pretty soon, and if you're dreading the work, You'll probably wish you were more organized last year. Saving business receipts is one thing, but a huge deduction a lot of people miss out on is using a personal car for business. Jamie Tucker shows us an app to help. Hey, kudos to the folks who have a system of tracking their business mileage. It's 58 and a half cents per mile that you can deduct, but the toughest part about tracking that mileage is actually tracking that mileage. This app does it for you automatically. Mile IQ tracks business mileage by tracking anytime your car is moving. Using the phone's GPS and accelerometer, whenever you pull out of the driveway, it starts recording mileage until you stop again. You can set this to manual mode where you have to remember to open the app and hit track or simply give it permission to run in the background so you don't have to do anything. When you stop the car, a notification pops up on the screen asking you to classify that trip as business or personal. Swipe right for business, left for personal. At the end of the month, you get a report showing every trip, and it's broken down for personal or business. It had the dates, times, and the addresses. A free version of the app gives you a limited number of drives each month. If you need more, an unlimited subscription is $6 a month or $60 a year. And deducting $0.58 cents per mile, this app kind of pays for itself, and you can write it off, too. I'm Jamie Tucker, and Mile IQ is the app of the day. Mile IQ is free for iPhones and Androids. According to its website, the app has logged more than 80 billion miles for more than 1 million people. An Atlanta district attorney investigation into former President Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Those results will be allowed to have a special grand jury this spring. Just into our newsroom, we have learned the move will allow the attorney to seat a panel focused on gathering evidence, which will make it easier, we're told, to gather witnesses. The attorney says he expects to decide whether to bring charges against former President Trump during the first half of this year.
Well, if anyone has lake plans over the next few afternoons, it will be chilly, and that water temp has actually gotten all the way down to 50 degrees. We'll have a look at our seven-day forecast here in Augusta just after break. Treatment and the insurance company is giving you the run around. At the Mike Hostel Law Firm, we do car wrecks. Let's have a conversation. Staffing shortages, unpredictable weather, COVID, all challenges we know families, businesses, and schools are facing. But these photos show not only a hard worker, but the assistant principal of Johnston Edgefield Trenton Jet Middle School. Yeah, Mr. Jason Schumpert, who stepped up and pitched in to work in the school cafeteria last week. He did this when help was needed. Edgefield County Schools posted the moment on Facebook, saying in part, this reflects how ECSD employees across the county are applying hard work to keep schools running. I love it when you see people just roll up their sleeves, jump in and pitch in and just do what's needed to get the job if done. If they have a GOAT award, I think he's just earned it. I think so, too. Absolutely. And definitely a, a good sign of leadership right there. Uh, definitely getting his hands dirty and love to see that out of Edgefield. All right, we are looking at pretty steady pressure the next couple of days. Not much rain in our forecast here in Augusta until we get to later this week. We are going to see a stronger cold front move through on Friday. That will bring us our rain chances. And as that front heads towards us, our barometric pressure will be dropping. So if you do suffer from arthritis, looks like Thursday into the weekend. That's when you could see those symptoms feel a little bit worse for you. Rain chances will be low Tuesday. Can't want a straight shower if you live south of Augusta. Our much better uh, rain chance is going to move in on Friday. That's where we're really timing out a uh, much more impactful system that at least brings us widespread rainfall. But behind the system tomorrow, we are going to see another cool down. Tips in the 50s for highs Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And coming up at 6 o'clock, more COVID testing rolling out nationwide. Keep it here to find out which county is stepping up to make sure students stay in class. After a short break, we're here for News 12 at 6 o'clock. Laura Warren joins me for that.